So my name is Ian Wilson and I work at the University of Cambridge and there I'm a professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology. And by training I'm a chemical engineer and I do various things We're looking at flow of liquids and complex fluids and in this case I do a lot of work on cleaning of complex fluids from surfaces. So I have the title of Professor of Soft Solids and Surfaces. I've worked in the field for about 25 years and some of the work relates to cleaning in place, as you say. Some of it relates to actually how the material gets on a surface, which is fouling. And sometimes it's integrated in cleaning in place systems, other times it is independent of cleaning in place systems, which is what you get in other industries. Because the key thing with our work is that it is universal so we might find an application which is directly relevant to eHedge, but in the same way it'll be directly relevant to people in the chemical industry, or even, sadly these days, in the defense industries, or in cleaning up after civil emergencies and things like that. Well, I've known about eHedge for about 20 years, through discovering what they had written in the field, and at various conferences I've met people who are involved in eHedge, in the last uh, six or seven years, I've been doing a lot more work in an area of cleaning where eHedge is developing a guideline. And the chairman of the guideline asked me if I'd like to get involved. And so I've been on that guideline committee, uh, helping, discussing, arguing about what should be there and what is technically correct. That's my job. Uh, and the, the flip side of that is that it's given me an exposure to what are the challenges in the food sector in this area. And so it has informed my research and helped me decide, well, actually, this is something we should really concentrate on because we know that the application is there. And in the UK, there's a lot of uh, incentive for academics to demonstrate that their work has impact. So this fancy word, impact. And this is directly useful in that. So I can explain to people we're doing this because it links into this particular challenge or opportunity or issue within this industry or that industry. Well, at any cleaning process, you have three factors. You have the soil material, let's call it a soil layer, which will be on a surface. And then you have, say, a solution which you're trying to use to make the cleaning happen. And so you have to look at the interaction of the soil with the surface and how strongly it attaches. And then you know what sort of forces you need to generate in the solution to cause the soil to detach from the surface. And of course, sometimes it can be chemical. You're using chemical action to destroy the soil so it comes away from the surface. And being a chemical engineer, we understand fluid mechanics, which is how the solution interacts with the soil. And we understand chemical reactions, which is what the solution does to the soil. Yes. So, actually, cleaning is chemical engineering. Any particular material is made up of molecules, and those molecules will like each other or not like each other. So, it's the nature of any material that dictates what it sticks to and what it does not stick to. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, with milk, you have a lot of proteins present, and the proteins are often charged, and they will attach to things like steel surfaces very happily. If you add some chemicals into that system, you will actually change the way that the protein wants to interact with the steel. And so whenever you're cleaning, say, milk deposits from surfaces, you often use alkali, because the alkali causes the protein to swell and become weaker. And that then allows you to use forces to remove it. Okay. So the, the cleaning solution has to be specific to the material because that dictates what it reacts with and what it doesn't react with. One is just because we have been using a certain chemistry with a certain material for many years, it doesn't mean we actually understand it very well. And particularly when we want to design something new or put it into a new plant at a new scale, we might find that the old patterns don't work very well. And that's because what we're trying to do is just copy rather than design something. So from the university or academic point of view, we're trying to understand the principles that would say, if it happened here, why did it happen here? And so how do I make sure it happens over there? Mm -hmm. So that's the, this getting at the core science, which we can then apply somewhere else. Now, the other thing that happens, of course, is that we might have had, let's say, a formulation or a method which we're allowed to use in the past. And then something comes along and says, you can't use that anymore. 
So let's say we have to phase a certain chemical out of a detergent. Now you're saying, how do we replace it? And there are two ways of doing this. One is to do many, many tests to try and find one, or you isolate what the action is and say, right, how do we make that happen? So there's one other aspect which more people will be able to identify with is that uh, the food sector uses a lot of water, it uses quite a lot of energy, and of course there are, they have to use some sort of chemicals to make these things happen. And those all put stress on the use of water in an area, the use of water in a country, and energy. So there's a big sustainability driver to actually make these systems more efficient. Because if you think of how often you wash up, if you roll that across the country every day, if you can make savings at the percentage level there, you start to have an impact. And so why we're interested in theories for this, or let's say the mathematics and everything behind that, is then we can actually start helping companies and factories and people who make things as simple as dishwashers more efficient. So you're actually able to get the same level of cleanliness, get the same amount of hygienic protection using less energy, less water, less chemicals. So that's a win-win for everybody. That, that means that there is more water, more energy to go around for other things. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Thank you very much.